All right. God bless. God bless. God is so good. Amen. Let's, we're going to see who's the first to show themselves this morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Angela's on. God bless you, Angela Trent. Amen. That means we're on, we are live. Hello, Sister Walker, all the way from Texas. Shakoria, girl, you all right with me. That's how you do it. When you first get into the kingdom, girl, you got to be excited. I don't care what's going on in your life. Be excited about God because that's your, uh, your support and he is your everything, girl. Good morning, Lashanda. How you? How all of you doing this morning? It's so delightful to see you this morning. Amen. God is good. Cosil, bless your sweetheart. Uh, Sister Annette Rogers, God bless you, darling. Kingdom Seekers, you're here. Amen. Amen. We just believe in the power of God to move. Good, mo good morning, Sister Hardaway. Shirley Hardaway, God bless you, sweetheart. Any others want to make Sure. That, oh, Deaconess Newell. God bless you, sugar. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. That's okay. We're going to be all right. Takesha, God bless you, sweetheart. Sister Cox, amen. I don't know what's going on, but we got it. We got it. We thank God for his goodness. Amen. I want the prayer warriors just to be praying. Amen. We're doing, we, we on uh, uh, business for the king. Amen. We went on, we on business for the king. And I trust that you all are seeing me. If you're seeing me, somebody said the live went out for a second. If you're seeing me, would you type in yes? Type in yes so I know that you see me. Good morning, Doris. God bless you, sweetheart. Would somebody type in yes to let me know you see us, that the live is back on? Went out for a second. I had to click my way back in. Okay, we they see me. All right, Rita. Hey, sugar. How are you? What an honor to have one of my... My, my estranged daughters on here. Sandra, Sandra Payne. Hey, sugar. God bless you. Good to have you. Claretta, the, another new convert that's on here. Gave our life to the Lord not long ago on the broadcast. God bless you, sugar. Amen. Everybody's coming in, coming in, coming in. Amen. There is a word from, from the Lord this morning. We're not going to magnify the enemy. <clears throat> Amen. But I thank God for being here with you at this moment. Amen. God is awesome. God is awesome. Amen. We're getting ready to get into <clears throat> our service on this morning. Not going to hold you uh, on this morning. And we have one of our uh, powerful evangelists that's going to come and, and um, give us a word of prayer and our opening scripture. And then we're going to go from there. God bless you. We're going to invite and ask um, Sister, me, I lost one of my people. Okay. Uh, ask Sister uh, Evangelist Vicki Ross is going to come now and do prayer and scripture. Good morning, saints. Let us lift our heart before God this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning, God. With thanksgiving in our heart, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for another day, God. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. God, we even thank you for strength this morning. Thank you for salvation, Lord. God, we got so much to be thankful for. Lord, we thank you for how you watched over us all night long. God, you kept us from hurt, harm, and danger. We just want to tell you thank you this morning, God. Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, before we ask you for anything this morning, God, we ask you to
in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning. God, we show sure thank you. God, we asking you to look on our leaders this morning. God, look on our leaders this morning. Everywhere, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, touch every woman, God, every man. God, touch your people today. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your will be done, God. Cover us in your blood, in the name of Jesus. And God, look on Dr. Wesson this morning. Oh, God, touch her. Touch her right now, God, from the crown of her head to the sole of her foot, all down on the inside. Renew strength, God. Renew strength in the name of Jesus. Feed her, God. Feed her, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. As she feed us, God, you feed her. Open up our hearts, God. Open up our minds. Open up our understanding. Don't let us just be a hearer of your word, but God, you help us to be a doer. And save the unsaved, God, and restore the backsliders. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Oh, the scripture we'll be coming from this morning, Psalms 100 and its entirety. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving, with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto the Lord, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. May the Lord bless the hearers and the doers of his holy word. God bless you, darling. We thank God for Evangelist Ross. And let me say this. If perchance, we're not looking for this, but if perchance this thing goes out, I'm coming right back and go directly, come out of streaming and going directly into Facebook. I'm going to bring this word this morning. To the glory and honor. Yes, yes, baby, the devil is a liar. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, right now, I'm going to bring my my second daughter, uh, uh, Sister Alita Arnold. She's going to come and render us some uh, some some um, songs of praise or hymns or worship this morning, uh, the songs of her choice. And we're going to ask her to come now and bless us in song. God bless you, Sister Alita. Amen. Good morning to everyone. God bless you. I would like to say the song that I'm about to sing. I do not own the copyright or the rights to the lyrics of this song. This song is Flow to You by Bishop Paul Morton. Flow to you. Flow to you. Let the rivers of my worship flow to you. 
Lord, I pray in all I do of my worship flow to you. Like streams in the valley, they swell with the rain. Let the sun, let it rise to bless your name, flow to you, flow to you. Let my worship fly, hallelujah, oh, flow to you. Lord, let the rivers of my worship, Lord, I pray, in all I do, flow to you. Oh, like streams in the valley, they swell with the rain. Lord, let it rise to bless your name and flow to you, to you, flow to hallelujah, oh, bless your name, oh, let all my worship flow to you, flow. Let all my worship, let all my praying all to you flow. Let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you, flow to you. Let all my praise flow to you. Nobody but you. Oh, let all my praise flow to nobody. Oh, like streams in the valley, they swell with the rain let the signs to bless your name flow to you flow to you let my worship flow to you hallelujah to God. We thank God for his goodness. We want all of his blessings. We want the rivers of living water to flow through us. And when the word of the Lord and the word flows through us, we can be a blessing to someone else. Thank God for Evangelist Ross and thank God for Sister Alita Arnold on this morning. We have a word from the Lord on this morning. We have a word that's going to bless you because it blessed me. And we thank God for his word. Father, we honor and praise your name and thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to stand in the gap, Father, to stand as your representative, to speak uh, as of the oracles of God. And I pray, Father, that this word will go forth and we come against every interruption. We come against every distraction that your word, God, your word is all powerful. Ah, it comes from, from you, Father God, because you are the word. Bless us today. Let this word get down on the inside and do what it needs to do. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. We're going to give God some praise. If you do some thumbs up for me out there, I praise God. Or some hand claps in the comments. We're giving God some praise on this morning. Amen. As I was asking the Lord, I was really studying some other uh, concepts in scripture and the Lord dropped this in my spirit. And I said, OK, God, you give me what you want me to say. And even this morning, he gave me some additional 
points concerning this. And it's, it's going to bless someone that's on here, if not everybody uh, on this morning. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. We're going to go to the Old Testament in the book of Psalm. And it's Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Psalm 129, verses 23 and 24. And it reads like this in the New King James Version. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see, see, use the vision to see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I just want to use for a thought this morning when I was, when he gave me this passage and I kept going in and he was giving me uh, some truths about this passage, some concept about concepts about this passage. And he give, he was giving me revelat, a revelatory knowledge about what was going on here that he wanted me to say to you, revelation knowledge. And, and it, he came to me when he said to me, heaven's x-ray heaven's x-ray and in our passage it says search me and the word search uh for most of us it means to look for or to explore or to seek for uh, there's some searches uh, uh that are more extensive than others i thought about sherlock holmes uh he came to my mind and he had the reputation of doing a thorough search and solving the crimes under his investigation. They knew if they put it in the hands of Sherlock Holmes and his assistant, that he was gonna find the criminal. He was gonna find the murderer. He was gonna find any hanky panky that was going on in relationship to that case. So search in our text today in the Hebrew, Hequa is a verb uh, in the instance meaning to, in this instance, meaning to examine thoroughly, to thoroughly examine. Jeremiah 17 and 10, a familiar passage to some of us says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And when I when I looked at that, uh, when, the, when the Lord was speaking through Jeremiah, and he says, I, the Lord, he identified himself. In other words, when I speak this, you don't need to consult with anybody else. What I say is what it is. It is truth. It doesn't need any backup from anywhere else. So he identifies himself, the author and the finish of our faith. He's the author of the Bible. He says, I search the heart and the heart you all hear uh, is the seat of our minds. It holds the, the mind, the will and the emotions. And sometimes the word heart is used interchangeably uh, for spirit, the spirit of man. But here it speaks of the seat of our minds, our wills and emotions. And you know what? Here's the key thing. The heart, the Bible says, is deceitful and utterly wicked. You know why? Because of our emotions. Our emotions will get us in trouble every time. We walk out on jobs. We do things that we shouldn't do because our emotions are involved. As saints of God, especially during this time, you got to hear God. You got to know that word, but you got to know how to take that word in wisdom and apply it to you, apply it to your situation, because the way we feel will get us in trouble when we get tired of being knocked around. We get tired of the enemy uh, beating up on us. He will beat us and tire us down and make us so tired that we can't think straight, that we can't consult God. So the mind and the heart are the hidden elements of our personality. But God, according to this passage here, it says, even to give every man according to his ways 
and according to the fruit of his doings. God sees everything about us and he sees it perfectly. He doesn't have any bias in there. He's going to call a spade a spade. We may miss something in our search. You know, we start searching ourselves and you say, well, I'm doing pretty good over here. And, uh, you know, I used to dislike such and such a person, but, you know, I can tolerate them now. And I may not be doing so well right here. You know, we search ourselves and we give ourselves a report card that doesn't match the report card from heaven. <laughs> we may miss something in our search when we look at ourselves and we dig down deep and try to find uh, what it is that's not pleasing in the sight of God. We will miss something in our search, but God searches our hearts and there's no stone left unturned. And we think we have camouflaged hidden stuff. We've camouflaged, we've covered it over. We don't think the saints know. We don't think, uh, we really don't think God knows the way we carry ourselves, uh, but David, in the 51st Psalm, and I read that, I try to read that Psalm every morning. David knew the secret to restoration. David knew he had sinned before God, but he also knew there were people who were after his very life that had accused him wrongly. Uh, Saul was after him for no reason. People cannot like you for no reason at all. People can dislike you for reasons that the devil has conjured up in their minds. And so what we have to do, we have to let God search our hearts. He's not going to leave anything out. He's not going to miss a thing. And so David says in the first two verses, have mercy upon me, O God. You call the shots. You're the author and you're the finisher and everything in between. So I need your mercy. I'm not coming full of myself and trying to justify myself, but I need you to have mercy upon me, oh God, according to your loving kindness. You love me and I know your love is agape love. So would you would you reach for me and, and search me and have mercy upon me according to where you love me? Uh, according to the multitude of your mercy. You got so many mercies, new mercies I see every morning. Hallelujah. I want you to look at me, have mercy upon me because there's some, maybe some stuff in there that I missed. It may be a little something in there, the dislike, or it may be something in there that I desire to do something and I, I don't want anybody else to know. I cover it myself because it's so gross and so wicked. And so God, you have mercy upon me. I'm not trying to justify myself and do it according to your multitude of your tender mercies. Then he says, blot out. You know, ladies, when we take uh, the, the tissue and we try to blot the makeup or the powder sponge and we blot or the sweat and we blot, he says, blot it out. You no, know, one at a time. Take your time and get it out of there. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. That's that hidden stuff. Uh, we grin in people's faces and, uh, you know, I'm just giving an illustration. I know everybody doesn't like Mother West. If that's okay, though. It's, I told y'all it's okay. You got to keep your heart clean. But you know what? I, I, I don't want to have a say, have a sense of uh, uh, forgiveness and it's not really there. I, the devil will give you a sense of it and make you feel like you forgive and you love and, and you, you don't lust after this and you'll have a sense of it. But if you dig down deep, if you let God just lay it all out there, sometimes I can come to the end of my rope and doing some things, even some things concerning the situation I'm in. I had to just say the other day, God, this is how I feel about this. I don't like feeling that way. But I need you to come in and wash me and restore me. Make me look from the perspective of heaven and not from the perspective of Vivian. But I'm going to lay it out here because I need to repent. I need to let you look at it. I need you to show me me. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my hidden stuff and cleanse me from my sin. You know what? There is people that understand this remnant people. There is no moving forward. There is no growing without confession, without being cleansed, without repentance, without subjecting our hearts to the probing x-ray instrument of God. Hallelujah. You know, it's typical of how, you know, I watch some people 
what they did was they judged the person they judged the situation they didn't wait to see was this god i i, I this this something we want to happen but it's typical uh, how we can see everybody's faults but ours and and, and and we hit a high in worship. Uh, we feel real good and and really sanctified. And after prayer and and after the fasting and and, and we forget. That's why people who are gifted, you have to be careful because the devil will come and give you a false sense of prayer. You think you prayed and you haven't prayed. You haven't sought God. You prayed what you heard over here and you prayed what you heard over there. But even if you heard something, you pray in the will of God. He might not want you to pray that with other folks corporately. He may want you. To go for before him directly and give it to him and put it in his ear. And so we have missed him when we go on our own, in our own strength, in our own understanding. We miss God. So we think we're on a high. Oh, did we enjoy? Oh, I had a good worship this morning. Did you really? Did you submit that heart and that mind to the probing x ray of God? so that you could worship him in spirit and truth with clean hands and a pure heart. And we pray and we fast and we think we've done ourselves a favor. We've done God a favor. But you know, the Bible talks about this is the, this is the fast that I call, not the one you call. So we forget, listen to this. We forget that demons are waiting for us to come back down off what we call a high. If he did, excuse me, if he did it to Jesus, you don't think he'll do it to you? He waits until we get on the mountaintop in our worship and feeling the presence of God and feeling good about everything around us. I've been there and I do it sometimes on a daily basis and bam, he'll hit with something. And then he'll test you. That's a testing you all. You up here and hear something, hear some news or something happened or something falls apart. The, uh, yesterday I was uh, doing something and, and it was going pretty smoothly. My, my daughter Lita was here and I was getting a little rest and I was thanking him. I said, oh God, thank you for the rest. I just, I don't know. And I said, thank you. And all of a sudden water started coming through my bathroom ceiling. I seen the time you all, I would have hit the ceiling. My daughter and I calmly, we didn't, we didn't, we, we know where, where, where the problem was and we got the towels and we, we waited, we wiped up everything. I washed the rugs and washed and went on about my business. He didn't get the victory. He did not get the victory. See, we got to understand that we do have an, have an enemy. We've got to understand, people of God, that we are in a race and there is an enemy to set up roadblocks in front of us. And so when you're on that mountaintop, be careful, be prayerful, be cautious. Strangely enough, to really sound spiritual, we will confess an area that doesn't really sound so wicked, you all. Doesn't sound so bad. Uh, we can't be heavily judged by our religious peers. So we'll do, yeah, let me give you an example. We said, yeah, you know, I admit child, I, I lost my temper when, when somebody messed with my child. You know what you're saying? The reason you're confessing it is because most people will agree with you. Yeah, I understand because if they mess with my child. But are you allowing that x-ray, God's heavenly x-ray, to go down on the inside to dig up that stuff that's touchy, the stuff that you really don't want anybody to know? Would you allow God's x-ray? Because sometimes some stuff God can go. Now, you don't worry about folks who digging up stuff in your, uh, uh, Bishop Wright says, they're going to go deep sea diving to dig up your stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God who has mercy and love when he finds what he finds. Because folks find what they find, they're going to judge you, send you to hell, which they have nowhere to put themselves or you. But you don't worry about that. You be concerned about how, what God sees when he puts that x-ray machine on us and we see beyond the outside. Man looks on the outside, but God looks on the, at the heart. He's measuring, he's, he's purging, he's searching our hearts, people of God. And you know, we'll say, well, 
you know what what uh, uh my child you know I, I i lose my temper child if it's it had to do with my child well you you're not confessing something that you know people will kind of forget they'll just you know pass that on by well what cushions it, this is the fact that the listener the one you're confessing to can kind of sympathize with that that's absolutely a false sense of spirit spirituality you're not spiritual <laughs> you're not exempt None of us is exempt from oppositions that attack the word of God in us. Let me tell you something. Demons care less about you, about us. They are after the God in us. They're after the word in us. They ain't caring about you. And then they could just flip a switch and, and say, boo, and some of us are wrong. They see something in you that they want to separate you from. Oh my God, I heard that in the spirit. The devil wants to separate you from the word. And when you separate from the word, it means you're not applying it. You're not reading it. You're not studying it. And you're not understanding it. So you're separated from something that's in you because you don't understand it. What good does it do to have a million dollars and you are running around in the streets begging for bread? So if he can separate from you, you from the word, he removes your understanding of the word. He can whip you raggedy like the seven sons of Sceva. He can whip you raggedy. So we're not exempt. But the demons are after that. Let me tell you, Satan himself is not bothering you. He's dealing with the higher authority because he's working on, on the end time. He's trying to win a victory. So there are demons assigned to you according to the realm you're in. <laughs> Come on in here. Your status in God. And most of those little demons, as I said before, that are attacking us, they little bit of something imps running around. All you got to say is scat. Get in the name of Jesus. Put that word on them. And they're beating us up. Come on. So we, we are the object of, of God's love and his care. So they're fighting us. They don't like the fact that God likes us. They don't like the fact that God loves us. They don't like the fact that we have authority over them. But if you don't know you have authority, they will take full advantage and they go to report to God and say, uh -huh, I thought you had uh, an evangelist. I thought you had a missionary. I thought you had a prayer warrior uh, that could um, uh, exercise the authority in your word. I, I told her uh, one little seed in her mind and she walked off from some stuff. She left her husband. She walked off from the ministry or whatever. All he wants is to get in there and separate you from what you've been given authority to use. Pride will make us want to hide those things that are hidden, those iniquities. But if we really love the Lord and we really want to please him, we must rid ourselves of that clutter. Don't let the enemy talk to you. When those seeds hit your mind, I have to catch. I'm like Sister Gibbs, she said the other day, and I said, man, that's exactly what God, exactly what the Lord gave to me. You have to exercise faith. And what that means is you got to practice using what you have authority over. You got to practice using the word. You can't just say, well, I got the word, the word come now, baby, you got to use it. You got to take that authority over the enemy in your life, over your family. I don't care how stupid they acted. I don't care what the demons look like they're doing. You stay on the wall because you have the authority. God has his right timing to come in and do something about it. Wait on him and trust the authority of the word of God. He gave us the authority. It's time to clean out our closets. And one of the successful tricks of the devil is to keep our eyes on other folks. And we neglect our stuff. We neglect what's in us. We keep our eyes. Uh, keep. We need to keep our eyes on, circum, on, on, take our eyes off of our circumstances, I'm sorry, and keep our eyes on uh, um, the Lord, on his word. He, the devil wants us to keep our eyes on our difficulties, our troubles, the things that we're walking through. But if you're going to put your eyes on a baby, you better put the word on it. Put the word on your situation. I know it's not easy. He didn't tell us it was going to be easy because the flesh, the emotions are involved. And when your emotions are involved, you want them to be appeased. You want a quick, uh, 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 a quick fix. Not with the believer. God doesn't fix everything for us right away.
He teaches us and he trains us as the as the the, 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 the text tells us today. I know it's hard, but we must accept God's will. We must accept his authority in our lives. We must accept what God allows and deal with it according to what he says to us. We're in a race. Paul understood this. I think we forget sometimes. First Corinthians chapter nine, verses 24 uh, through 27 says, do you not know though that those who run in a race all run? We all in the race, you all. If you're in Christ, you're in the race. But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. That's for everybody. I run, I get the prize. You run, you get the prize. Run like you know you're going to get the prize. Take authority over everything in your way, every obstacle, every cone they sit in your way, every roadblock. Ask God to give you the spiritual bulldozer, of the word of God to knock it over and you keep on pushing. Be that like that energizing bunny. Come on and keep on ticking. Come on. And everyone, he says, who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. You don't overdo it in anything. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. In the in the natural race back during that time, they did it just to get a crown of, of a wreath around their heads. They did all that preparing and, and, and disciplining themselves in the food that they ate and, and making sure their strength, their, they had the strength and, and exercising and doing without the, the sugar and, and eating the right vegetables and what have you, just to get a little crown with with leaves on it how much more the bible says paul says but we for an imperishable crown he says therefore in verse 26 i run thus not with uncertainty I, i'm not running to hope i make it in i hope the lord rebukes the devil i hope i no 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 you run this race with certainty because you're running for an imperishable crown he said, thus I fight. Listen, we're in a warfare. You're going to have to fight the fight. Come on in here. No, we're not going to like everything that the, that the Lord allows to come our way. But his perfect will is going to be done if you let it be done in your life. Thus I fight. Not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body like a boxer and bring it into subjection. So like your emotions, you're not controlling anything. The spirit of God in me controls this, this race. It controls my body. Body, you will come subject. He says, lest when I have preached to others, and this is what's happening. People are preaching to others and prophesying and, and being used in the gifts, and they are not exercising faith in God themselves. You can be preaching to others and then become disqualified in this race. He says, I'm not going to be disqualified. I know in one passage in whom I believe. Come on, I'm confident in the person that I believe in. So we hear these extravagant claims, these extravagant testimonies. But when we compare them to with the actual truth about us and our spiritual experiences, we come up short. Oh, my God uses me to da 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 da. Oh, come on. You better watch it because the devil is standing right there to make you eat every word you spoke. Come on in here. So we come up short, people of God. Go and let the x-ray of God go down on the inside and show what's really in there. Let him, let him, because you know what? There's no near, ah, I hear God. There's no need in carrying around dead weight. Hebrews says, lay it aside every weight every sin that besets you, that sets you off in the wrong direction. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. You don't have to come up short with God, but you got to be open. You got to be transparent. You got to allow his x-ray uh, a vision to go and, and screen out what's in there that sometimes you're missing because you it's, it's become such a part of you until you don't even recognize it, it's, it's uh, contrary to God's will in your life. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. First John 8, 1, 8 through 10, New King James says, and 
if we say that we have no sin, see, see, I told you, you just need to let that x-ray machine go on down there. Because if you say you have no sin, John says, you deceive yourself. And the truth is not in you. You know what that means? If you are denying that there's something in you that, that needs to be delivered, that you need to be delivered from, that means that the word of God in you is not in you. Because if it were in you, where it needed to be, you would have confessed that thing. You would have sought deliverance for that thing because the word of God that takes root in you cannot be in the same soil. Oh, I hear God cannot be in the same soil, which your heart is a soil. So, oh, look at God. The word of God ha, is a soil. That's the heart. The word in your heart cannot be in the same soil with sin. Now I understand John. Now God, I've been asking God for revelation for that for a long time. If the word is really in you, come on now. I'm not talking about you quoting it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it's in you. You understand it and you're going to apply it. If it's in you, it cannot dwell in the same spot with sin. With that thing that you want to allow God to come on, come on, come on. Look at what John says in verse nine. We know this one. If we confess our sins, going to confess, let him show it to you, confess those sins. Now he's talking to believers. He is faithful. He's not going to deny you. He's not going to back up off of you. He's faithful and just. He's fair. He's going to forgive us of our sins and he will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Verse 10, verse John 1 and 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. Now understand it. It means that you saying that the word is in you and the word is the authority. The word is holy. And if you're saying that you haven't sinned, but sin is in there and you're saying then that the word and sin are dwelling together. Oh my God, this is not in my notes. This ain't nothing but the power of, of the, the revelation of God. Ah, revelation knowledge. So the two can't be in that together. So if you're saying that you haven't sinned, you're saying that the word is in there. Come on, you're a believer. So if you're saying you haven't sinned, what you're saying is, I don't have any sin in me. But if sin is in there, come on, you're saying that the word is in there with your sin. Mm -mm. If we say that we have sinned, we make him a liar. We make Christ a liar. We make God a liar. And his word is not in us. The word is not in you. You need to get in that word and whatever that, if it's a lust thing, you lust and you can't, women, you can't maintain. You need to ask God for some help. Don't act like you're okay when you're not. We say we love, but love is not being demonstrated. We say we have forgiven, but forgiveness is, is not being practiced. It's not being evidenced. You got to practice doing this thing. Come on in here. You got to take that word and put it to the test. The word of God is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It will go down and then cut out stuff. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. So those that are outside of the kingdom of God and those fellow kingdom citizens can conclude that there is a significant contradiction to what's really in us. You act in one way and saying something else. You're con contradicting yourself. And then people like Shakoria and people like uh, this other baby that just gave, gave her life to the Lord. They're going to wonder, well, what is this about? I, I don't know if I want to be a part of this. They saying something, one thing, and they doing something else. So what is really why? I don't know if I want to be a part. They came out of that stuff. They came out of the sin business. Come on in here. And they now have uh, entered the kingdom. The church has allowed them to be ushered into the kingdom. Amen. The church is the one that brings them in. And we become a, a part of Christ. And then that means that we are now a part of his kingdom. So you got people that are watching you and they're watching your behavior. Your behavior is an indication how you act and you disrespect leadership. And all of this is sending a message. It's saying that the word is not in you. 
Woo, my God, I've been asking God for revelation on that passage for years. First John, there's some things that I didn't quite, I knew what certain commentaries were saying, but it wasn't sitting right with me. I now understand from experience now, understand what it means. God bless you, Brother Bond. Amen, God, Brother Maurice Bond. And so these babies that just gave their lives to Christ, amen, they're looking at us. Uh, the ones that they're not in Memphis, Tennessee. One is way in, I think, uh, Pennsylvania somewhere anyway, uh, way away from us. And one is down in Miss, uh, I don't know where the other one, oh, right here in Memphis and some others. But they're watching whomever they are around. They're watching believers. They're watching the ones that say they already had Christ. They're looking to see a difference. And when your behavior is not like it should be, Come on in here. That is not a testimony. We want to testify and witness with our mouths. I'm telling you, the greatest witness you can have is with your life. Especially when you're around coworkers and every day, you can't be preaching to them every day. You can't do it like that. But your behavior, they can't do anything. Oh, I hear God. They can't do anything with your behavior, baby. There's not a thing they can do. Your behavior is, oh my God. Oh, God, God, the behavior is the word. I just heard God confirm this thing. He said, we're living epistles, read of men. Oh, that, oh, that doesn't bless my soul right there. So they're watching you. They're reading you without even opening your mouth. Nobody can take you before the EO, EEOC or whoever that is y'all go to saying you up in here uh, 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 giving people uh, uh, religion. No, nah, baby, when you act it out, you don't have to open your mouth. Come on. We boldly claim that we are the sons of God by our behavior, even that we are we are risen with Christ. We with we, we were raised with him and seated with him. See, once you're raised in Christ, once you came, when he went down in the uh, in the grave, we went down and we were uh, we eradicated sin by uh, letting the flesh be dealt with by him going down in the grave. And then when he we came back up, we came back up to newness of life. So guess what? It didn't stop there. Oh, my God, my God. When we came up out of the grave with him, come on, come on. We then now are in a new seat. You know, people like to fight over seats when they get in the church, but baby, you, I got a seat that tops the seat in the jurisdiction. Come on in here. I got a seat in heavenly places. If I never sit in the old shy, if I didn't old so, if I never sit on the front seat ever again, it's okay. It's okay because I, I got a seat in my mind. My mind takes me beyond where a hard bench is, my mind takes me to heavenly places. And when I get to heavenly places, it's so much peace and so much joy and so many blessings in that seat until I forget about the, the hard wooden seat that folks want to fight over. I, I don't even think about it. I get so engrossed and so caught up in the heavenly places, the seat, because the Bible says in Colossians chapter three, verse one, if then, if then, when you are raised, as this if means when, if you are raised with Christ, in other words, since you have participated in both his death and his resurrection, now you got a new goal in life. My new goal, I know down here it's okay for, if you have positions and we say, I ain't talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Uh, but it's saying that you got a new goal in life. And that goal is to seek, he says in that, that, that part of that verse, uh, verse one, seek those things which are above. I'm not trying to seek the seat. I want to seek those things we're above. And I'm telling you, when you seek what's above, he'll sit you in places and in the unshow. He'll sit you on a platform where folk will hear what God wants to say through you. He'll put you there. He'll stand you up when you look like you look like you're about to lean, about to fall on your face. God will prop you up. Hallelujah. He'll take his big hands and hold you and position you in a place where the people can hear what he says to you. Speak thus saith the Lord. And then Paul says, seek those things which are above. Then your life, it means, this is what he means, then your life should be exemplified by the pattern of heaven. <laughs> My life, I want when people to look at me, and you know, we got our personalities and all, but see, I want them to look 
had they be that so much of of Christ was shined through me till they see Christ over Vivian, her personality, whatever personality you got, you may be jolly or whatever. They look past that and they see even in that they see Christ. They see heaven in the old shine. They see heaven in you. They see the fact that you are not just down here in the earth, but you are a citizen of a kingdom. You are a citizen of heaven because you smell like heaven and you look like heaven in the old shine. You talk like heaven to folk. You talk like folks who are citizens. Ha, ba, 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 sha. Glory to God. Your life, your life, your behavior because you let the x-ray machine in, because you let God's x-ray come in, says then your life, this is what I'm saying, then your life will be exemplified by a pattern of heaven. You don't know what things to seek until you hear God's voice uh, uh, through his word and hear and understand what he expects through his word and through prayer. And the rules and the guidelines needed in your walk come from the king. They come from the king and his throne in heaven. Where Christ is sitting, the passage says, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. That's where I want my mind to be. I want to be elevated in my mind. There is another realm, people of God. We keep staying down here and we keep trying to handle stuff down here when we need to handle everything from another viewpoint, through another realm, amen. And, and when we pray that enters us into that realm to handle uh, that that's natural, we go into the spiritual realm and God himself and the power of God will handle those things in the earthly realm. So the, the passage says in Colossians, where Christ is, where he lives, where he dwells, sitting at the right hand of God and, and, and see where the throne is, is, is at the right hand of God, where his throne is, is where God is. But at the right hand, it si simply means power, the seat of power. The throne is, is simply the seat of power. And if you're at the right hand of throne of God, then you, you're right over there where the power is. You're right next to the power. So people of God, he says, set your mind on things above not on things on the earth. It means change your mind, change how you think. You got to do kingdom thinking now. And so the resurrection of Christ uh, gave us victory people over the, uh, uh, over the power and the bondage of a sin life. We are, we are new citizens in a new kingdom. And we were once citizens in the kingdom of darkness. And Jesus uh, uh, translated us, moved us to the kingdom of light and, and, and he finished the work on the cross and he transferred us to the kingdom of light. Light and darkness don't mix. Satan had the keys to death. Come on, he, he could lock it up, you know, but the, we got the key now to bind and loose, to lock and unlock. And, and so he had the keys to hell and the grave, but Jesus took those keys and he became our way out of bondage. Come on, but our way into the kingdom of God via the church via the church. The church introduced us to the king, to the door, and he was the key that ushered us into the kingdom. In Romans 6, 8, and 10, I'm coming to a close. I'm coming to the end. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. All in one time, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, for everybody. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Psalm 139 in our text, the psalmist was really saying, I'm in trouble. He knew that God, that the God that he served was omniscient. He already knew before he confessed. He knew David every he, he knew David's every move but but he above everything he knew David's motivation. He knew God knew everything. God knew everything about him. And not he knew every move he made, he knew, knew what his thoughts were, but he also knew what motivated David. And so he gets into the presence of God in our text and he uses the formula for resetting the, the resetting the button uh, of his journey that puts him on his journey and he's now set to righteousness. So David prays for spiritual x-ray. And this is one of my favorite in, 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 in Psalm uh, uh, 
in our Psalm today, it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. David is coming clean, y'all. He's experienced a relationship with the holy God, a God that's omniscient. Don't need me trying to hide it anyway. And if I'm missing it, God, I'm giving you permission. He says, try me and know my anxieties, my inner conflicts, uh, feelings of doubt and feelings of apprehension about the outcome of situations and problems and health and money situations. He says, try me, test me, look on the inside of me. David had a heart for God. He knew the futility of trying to hide stuff. So he says, go ahead, God, and put me to the test. I know the weak are making accusations, but you already know the truth. You know the truth. My soul loves you. He says, test me. This is David. This is what he's saying. This is what it means. Put me in the refiner's fire as you would go. And David knew this search would show his innocence. He was innocent before God, but he said, you're the one. If you say I'm innocent, guess what? I don't care who else says anything. And so he says, and lead me, lead me. Well, he says, and see if there is any wicked way in me. So he said, in other words, I don't want to fall in the wrong path. I don't want to go down the wrong path. I, I don't want to grieve you, God. Uh, I, I don't want to hurt you. I, I want to do what's right. And so he said, then lead me in the way everlasting. And so like David, a searching that leads to cleansing is what we need. We need a spiritual x-ray. We need to go and get tested. An x-ray is an imaging test. It's designed to produce pictures of the internal parts of the body. Not needed or designed for the outside, you all. You know, we can dress the outside up. But it's designed to give a picture of precision of the internal organs and the internal tissues and the internal bones of the body, the structure, the frame of the body. It's designed to spot what we can't see with the naked eye, people of God. It's designed to spot abnormalities or diseases. Heaven's x-ray machine can reveal the deepest, darkest secrets. You can go back and you can say, I didn't, I don't like my mom. I, I didn't ever forgive her. She may be dead and gone, been dead 10 years. God will unearth it and then heal. He'll give you that mercy and that loving kindness as he x-rays you and un unearths and allows you to see what's going on so that you can be fit for the kingdom. You can be quick, equipped to do kingdom work. He goes all into the deep, uh, dark secrets of our minds. And when our master physician unearths the hidden abnormalities, uh, it can only remove without our permission. You got to give, you got to sign a document. You People don't operate on you except you sign the consent form. Ah, you got to sign the consent form. God, God, the, the God is a, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and he, 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 he wants you to invite him in. And if you ask him, he'll come in. And so he uses a surgical knife that leaves no sign uh, of there having been any abnormality. And so the writer is saying, guide me into this path of righteousness. I want to avoid this wicked path. So we don't have to have a false sense of anything, you know, acting like we forgive it, acting like we're loving, acting like we're not lusting, acting like and we're not worrying about our finances, acting like, acting like, acting like. We don't have, we, this is a false sense of, 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 of life. We don't have to do that because to have a false sense of what the Lord requires of us gives freely uh, the devil uh, freedom to work with us to exhibit counterfeits. We'll be walking this journey, claiming things, claiming spiritual things, claiming spirituality. Come on in here. And we're really operating in counterfeits, counterfeit love, counterfeit forgiveness, counterfeit worship, counterfeit praise. You can have the real thing today. <laughs> you don't have to have the counterfeit. There's so many of us so many of us that need to be delivered. So many of us that need to be healed. Some of us, oh, I hear God. We're not 
seeing that we need to be healed because you've never had the surgical knife in the area where there is something going on in there. Ah, Baba. There's some areas in there. That's why Christ allowed you to come into the kingdom so he could work on you. He saw those abnormalities. He forgave you of your sins, but there's some things you got to walk out. Sanctification has to be walked out. You have to practice using the word of God. Use it. And so once you submit and sign that consent form, say, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, use me to your will and to your glory. Lord, go in and take out anything. They used to sing that song. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me. And some say, strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Please search me, Lord. Turn the light from heaven on oh, my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be take it out and strengthen me i want to be right i want to be saved i got to be whole hallelujah thank you jesus father we thank you today for the people of god those of you that are viewing this broadcast and you don't know the lord you 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 need that x-ray machine but you need it to show the fact that you are a sinner that your heart is desperately wicked. You don't know Christ. I invite you today. I invite you today to just type in or you can email me on the email on this site. It's VM Wesson. I'm sorry, VMW Ministries at gmail.com. You can do that and I'll minister to you and show you how to come into the kingdom of God. But if you're on here today, I want you to be bold enough to say, I need Christ. I need to be in the kingdom of God. I need that new lifestyle. I need Christ to open the door and let me in. You have to repent of your sins. You have to confess and repent of all your sins. You have to name them one by one. Because once you get in the kingdom, he starts working on some stuff that, that you know, they're still hanging off of us. And he does it in love. Yes, sometimes it pain, it's painful, but sometimes you have to cut uh, the branches off of a tree in order for the tree to survive and to thrive. That's I think that's uh, John chapter 15. And so if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, I invite you right now to just type in the box. I want to know the Lord. I, I want to be saved. I want to get into the kingdom of God. I want to be a part of the kingdom. If you're here We'll pray with you. The saints, we can't hear each other, but you can hear me and the saints can hear you. And they are going to be praying for you if you're here on the broadcast. And if you're not, guess what? I thank God for each and every one of you. And this message comes to get us into this new realm of thinking. Our, our minds, if we want to admit it now, with all that we do on these jobs and in our homes and dealing with children, <laughs> And I'm dealing with a lot of situations at my age. I would think I wouldn't, but God has allowed some things to happen. So I have to depend on his strength to bring me through some things. But if you are here and you listen to this word, ask God to search you because there is another a, a realm in him. There's a, another depth in, in God. You know, and I, I've reached that, that depth and, and he's uh, manifested it to me on during this pandemic. Uh, but on last week and week before, I, 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 he showed me the how where I'd come from. You know, when you look down, you don't want to look up. When you when you come from something, you want to look down to see where you just came from. So he allowed me to look down to see the growth that had taken place. Am I as he threw with me? No, I'm still here. There's still some areas that I want God to just totally, completely deliver me from. But I see those areas and I, I, I'm aware of them and I acknowledge those things. And so whatever I walk through, it's God doing that for me. It's God testing me, putting me in the refiner's fire. That's why we go through things, Michelle, sometimes like sicknesses and all. You got to trust him. You got to believe that he is who he say he is and that he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. So I thank you today for listening to the word of God. Father, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. And we decree and declare that this word has not gone out void. Your word spoke it. 
and said your word will not go out and come back void. So Father, I pray that it will penetrate and saturate the hearts of every listener in the name of Jesus. You did it for me first. And so I'm asking you now, you call me, you sent me to do this work. And so Father, I know I'm not doing it in vain, but I pray those who uh, don't even understand how this is to take place, that you by the power of your Holy Spirit will minister to them however you want to do it in dreams, visions, through the word, through other people ministering and talking to them. Open it up and give them revelation knowledge in the name of Jesus. And all the glory is yours. All the honor is yours. In Jesus' name I pray. And I thank you, Father God. Amen and amen. Al, if you want to seed, we have our ticker tape running at the bottom telling you how you can seed into the ministry, how you can seed into West Haven, the West Haven Community Church. Uh, my um, That's West Haven Given. And then my outreach is Rhema Outreach with the dollar sign. All these are cash apps. And then for me personally, it's dollar sign V-I-V-M Wesson. Viv for the short part of my first name, Vivian. Viv M for the middle initial I use, which is my maiden name that I use. Viv M Wesson. Uh, hey, Chantrea, good to see you, baby. Good to see you. And Kiara, all of you, people of the Lord, Sister Rogers, Annette Rogers. And I think I saw Sandra Mitchell after the broadcast had started. And Kim, God bless you, Kim. Oh, bless you, darling. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Just keep me in your prayers. Thank you, Rita. Rita's my virtual secretary. Rita has posted it uh, on the comments uh, down there. So I thank you. We got two readers today. Rita Clark, that's my baby. And then Rita Smith is one of my new babies. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. So we're going to get out of here. I appreciate evangelist Vicki Ross. And um, we're going to be doing a once a month. Uh, evangelistic outreach uh, on here with uh, some of the ladies from the church. Uh, I'll just produce it and bring them forth and hopefully Sister Lita can sing for us and I'm going to let them bring the word maybe sometime some of them to it once and um, uh, share with you from the word of the Lord. We've got some evangelists on here that know how to bring it. God bless you too, Kim. You're welcome, Rita. But keep me in your prayers and I'm going to get off here and make sure that I give uh, my tithes and offerings and that pastor's tithes and offerings are given as well. God bless you. I love you. And you can't do a thing about it. God bless. <laughs>